So a few days ago I put a photo up on X and Blue Sky of my Raspberry Pi collection that was newly completed. I'd got uh, models 1 to 5. So I didn't think it would be very interesting to anyone other than me, but turns out it got quite a conversation going. So I thought I'd throw together this little video just to show you my collection and what I actually used them for. And also I wanted to try out this new desk view feature that uh, Apple are offering with their MacBooks. So let me start with the Raspberry Pi 1, which is this one. It wasn't called the Raspberry Pi 1, it was called the Raspberry Pi Model B because they did a Model A which was cut down as well. So you can see this version was designed with a little RCA plug on it so as you could plug it into the analog port of a TV. Uh, it does also have an HDMI port there too. So I purchased this used it a few times I think might have tried to run an emulator on it for like old Sega games and that sort of thing but ultimately didn't have a clue what to do with it so it sat in the box for a couple of years eventually though I turned it into a fan controller for my AV cabinet and it also did some UPS monitoring for a little APC UPS that I'd got in that cabinet but I'd only used a cheap SD card in there so ultimately the SD card failed so I replaced it with an ESP32 in the end just to do the fan controlling. So then we move on to the Raspberry Pi 2 and I got this because I decided I was going to make myself my own NAS. Uh, this was going to be like a backup server for my main NAS. I put a two terabyte hard drive inside a case and then glued it in there and you can see this sticky pad on there where that was actually stuck to the roof of the case. So it was quite slow but it did work, so it was functional, and I carried on using that right up until the hard drive died in the case, just started making those weird clicking noises. And now the Raspberry Pi 3. Now this is where things started to get really serious, serious for me, because this was my first home automation server. I was running a bit of software called Demotics, which is quite good for beginners actually, uh, but it is a bit limited in functionality, which is why I moved on to Home Assistant. And I've actually got the original case that I used to put it in and you can see if I take this apart there's a little hole in there that's where the aerial used to stick out. The aerial was for a Raspberry board which is like a Z-Wave controller that uh, connected to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. I've actually got two Raspberry Pi 3's the other one is in that case over there on the shelf I've no idea why I bought two of them I, I don't know I must have had a reason at the time. So because I was using an ESP32 to control the fan in the AV cabinet, I still needed something else to control the UPS or, or monitor the UPS. And that's why I bought this, which is a Pi Zero. It's inside this case. I'll open it up now. Can't open it. No. There we go. There is the Pi Zero. Let me focus in on that. You can see how small that is really. It's quite a miracle of miniaturization. So that miniaturization does of course come at a bit of a cost because there is no networking on this at all. You can get the Zero W which has got wireless built in, but for this one you have to plug in an external ethernet adapter in the USB port. But ultimately I've got rid of that UPS now I've got home batteries. So this is just sitting there doing nothing, waiting for a museum to collect it I guess or for me to find another use. So eventually I started to outgrow Demotics and I moved to Home Assistant and to run Home Assistant I used a Raspberry Pi 4. Not this one though, this one actually belongs to my son and it's uh, currently set up for a demo that I'm going to be doing on a video for rich notifications in Home Assistant. But my actual Raspberry Pi 4 that is my own is sitting in the garage in an Argon case so uh, I'll put an overlay photo of that for you. So the one in the garage has 8 gig of RAM in it and it runs Home Assistant perfectly. It probably only needs 4 gig, I could have got away with that. This one here's only got 1 gig of RAM in it and it does struggle quite a bit for the demos that I do. And then and finally we have the Raspberry Pi 5. Now this is the latest and greatest in their lineup and honestly I have no idea what I'm going to do with this yet. I think in the first instance it's going to replace my Raspberry Pi 4 as a test Pi for demos uh, but ultimately I'll probably replace the Pi 4 in the garage with this one because it's just a lot more powerful. I haven't even powered this on yet actually. Actually that's a point. This could be a totally dead one. 
I haven't even tried, I haven't even plugged in the power yet. I'm gonna have a play with that this afternoon. So the big selling point of the Raspberry Pi 5, aside from its extra processing power, is this little PCI Express connector here. I've seen people connecting graphics cards and we've connected drives to them, like solid state drives. So you've got a lot more flexibility in what you can do with the Pi 5. Anyway, I hope you liked that little overview. If you did, then like and subscribe for free and check out membership options and all of the usual standard YouTube terms and conditions sort of things. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye -bye.